Yo, what up? Boom, back at you, Mike Hart TV. Yes, um, we're about to get into the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So, yes, um, part three of the reunion. I got a lot of thoughts on this. I apologize for getting the review out to you late. Um, my mother called me after I recorded the other videos. We were on the phone about three hours. She was telling me about the whole Waffle House situation and how my sister was supposed to be meeting up with them girls, the Delta, uh, that's her Sarah, but she ended up having to work, and she was telling my mom how she was going to be probably taking off work, you know, um, but my mom was like, no, go. And so she missed the whole thing. So thank God, you know, for my sister, you know, and our family, but, you know, my prayers go out to those families and all that. So, like I said, that's why I'm getting this review out to you all late. Um, I know some of the big vloggers done already. They ain't going to put their shit out and everybody else. But I have not watched a single video. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to go about hitting this thing on review. Um, so, y'all bear with me because I don't really want to keep y'all long on this. But it's probably going to run me about a good 20 minutes. So, boom. Let's get into it. We picked up. Nene still yelling, reading Kim ass down. Boom, moving right along. The dang on. Um, question comes up about the whole handicap situation. And, you know, Kim's like, I was trying to figure out why you was in a handicap and all that. And, and you know, why did you take a picture, girl? The whole shit situation and everything. You was really trying to be shady and use that shit as ammunition. How you been doing this whole motherfucking season. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that's what Nene was like, girl, why the fuck does it even matter to you if I got this thing on um, uh, handicap, or this car part in this motherfucking handicap spot, if you minding your business or whatever, let parking patrol handle it or whatever, you know? So then the whole situation comes up with um, Kim and her diseases, you know, how Nene was talking about her and stuff, and Kim's kind of like, you know, I have had these, I have had a stroke, I have had, you know, blah, 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 blah. She wraps up about 20 motherfucking damn ailments, and I'm like, Girl, you know, Nene's kind of like, girl, where is your scooter? Where the fuck is your scooter? Because you got all this shit going on. You clearly need some type of assist. Okay? You need some assist. And, um... <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. That whole fucking where is your scooter <laughs> That shit took me the hell out or whatever, but... Like I say, we moving right along to take off. <laughs> Kim ass probably was motherfucking damn jealous because she needed to park her ass there with all the motherfucking damn uh, ailments she got going on. She need a damn scooter shit. And a damn, like I say, every damn thing. Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare, every damn thing. <laughs> she need playing B <laughs> shit. Anywho, they go get to the whole Sheree and Tyrone. Now, Sheree has been dating this character Tyrone for a second. And, um, you know, she, he's been in there for, like, two years. He's in prison, prison bay, and pretty much Kim, the only one supporting her on this situation. She feel like they got a connection. I'm like, girl, how the fuck you got a damn connection with this dude? And this dude is up here locked the fuck up. You know, Sheree already up here talking about she ain't, uh, she dating other people and been on other dates and stuff. And, you know, they still here having dang gone collect call, pillow talk, or, or a phone booth talk, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Sheree, your whole family don't even fucking agree with this situation. You been damn ducking off like you on the DL or whatever this whole Whole season, we is over you, Miss Sheree Whitfield, and we glad this is your last motherfucking season on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and hopefully it's no terms of a fucking rehire. So, anywho, anywho, um, dang on, uh, they bring up the whole situation with Nene and, and the whole uh, Tyrone, and you know, and uh, you know, she pretty much kind of denied the whole situation, but. Uh, Andy pretty much spoke to Tyrone. Tyrone was like, you know, she was aggressive. She was a stalker and all that. She like, you know, I know, I know, you know. So Nene even put out a, uh, a, a text or something like, yeah, yeah, I sucked this dick. I'm like, okay. Or whatever. You probably did the way he was talking or whatever. Because, hell, it sounded to me like y'all was on the road being a stunt queen or whatever. Going from dang on Walmart to Walmart, bank to bank to bank. Dang on, you know, cash and checks. That's why he probably locked up in there now. That's why the fuck damn Chateau Charay is getting the fuck paid for. Boom, moving right along. Anywho, so we get the whole um 
Kim and Kenya's beef, um, or whatever, you know, they beef go back to the whole charade's housewoman party and stuff, and how, you know, pretty much Kim started taking jabs at them, um, Kenya, and you know how Kim does, she always poking and pride, poking and pride, and all that, and, um, you know how they, you know, she's talking about her marriage is fake and all that. So this whole time, they sitting up here going back and forth. And, you know, Kenya's kind of behind Kim. And Kim's kind of giving her the back. So Kenya's like, oh, no, bitch. Let me get the hell up and walk across here. Candy's like, let me scoot over so you can sit right here and let this girl have it. Or whatever. Kenya goes in and all this. Everything calls Croy a uh, dang um, a bitch. Called the chauffeur, you know. Call her a drunk ass. Everything. So she got babies, kids. And she done damn corrupted and all that. I mean, she went in on Miss Damn Kim Zodiac Beerman. I was so loving that whole situation because you know whenever Kenya, she don't play. Whenever you done pissed her ass off, she will come for blood on your ass and she don't, she, she just stay in your fucking throat or whatever. And I love every bit when she gets to reading the girls down. And so she got her little yellow dress ass up over there and damn so I was like, yes, ma'am. Go ahead and give it to the girl because that's what she need right there. And Kim all... You know how the fuck she looked them goddamn duck lips and goddamn buoys on her motherfucking face. Oh, God. Don't even get into that. So, uh, you know, if I'm all out or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Why do I got my own show and uh, for seven seasons in? Needy like, yeah, girl, why do you got your own show? We all, all of us sisters want to know why you got your own show or whatever. And we already know why damn Kim got her own show. We know why she got her own show. She either big popping her way to getting her own damn show, but I don't think if Andy had anything to do with it, he ain't want none of that sour puss or whatever, you know. So, dang on, uh, she probably dang on used her privilege like she tried to do later on, and we're going to get into that, okay, at the end to get her damn show. So, nevertheless... Let's see, and then she goes into this whole thing, you know, about her having this skincare line of 15, that's worth 15 million dollars or something like that. I'm like, girl, you, I don't know where, it, where it's working and all that. So then they get to talking about Brielle and, and the whole thing on social media and stuff and how pretty much Nene went ham on them and the family was like, you know what I'm saying, y'all some racist and all that and everything. I mean, and I see why Nene is like, you know, y'all racist because Kim has said some condescending stuff. To the uh to to the girls over the years, and I don't even think she realized. I, no, I think she knows what she's saying or whatever, because it's been told to her on several occasions. People have told her on many different occasions. Uh, uh I remember uh when Derek J they was out there in the country, and she was up on the little camper with Candy, and he told her ass about her damn self, and, and it's being brought up on several. So she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's saying, and she knows what group she's amongst or whatever. But this is how you talk behind closed doors, girl. So, anywho, uh, so, let's see, what happened here? So, they going back and forth and everything, and, uh, you know, Kim and, uh, Kenya gets into this whole thing or whatever, and pretty much Kenya is like, girl, you need to go fix your double chin and all that or whatever, and, and if you hadn't noticed, Kim do got a lot of extra skin up under her chin for her to bend up under that knife so dang on much. I'm sorry, I already done told you, I don't really do Miss Kim's Zodiac. Or whatever. Anywho. So they go over Kim and Nene's whole thing. How they done had this whole drama and beef over the years and everything. You know. And, and you know. They, they just been having this whole spat. You know. All the way from close your list to married men and all that stuff. You know. And you know. You're a racist. So. Anywho. Um, what's happening here? Yeah, so they bring up the whole situation with the whole roaches thing and all that and how it was brought up in the dang on um Bria had recorded this video up in the bathroom. They ain't look like roaches to me. And I'm like, Nene, if they was roaches, them shits are scattered and they be trying to run from your ass. Them things was sitting right there. But whatever. And uh, Kim still don't realize uh if I I ain't trying to understand why it was a racist remark and all that. And you know, then they go on the whole thing about how um 
you know, about the costume party and whose idea it was. It was like, it was Cynthia's idea about the, um, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, Cynthia, you better get your top model on because they did that damn thing. And Nene's kind of like, you know, I came on this whole season with you, Kim, with a clean slate just like all the other ladies did, but you really fucked that up and everything. Uh, even at the whole uh, gays and whites party and stuff, you, um... You know, I came and met you with open arms with no type of malice, but you come in here with that dumb shit and your daughter up here trying to trying to play me in my house and you know it's brand damn new, so boom. You know, Kim, she like, whatever, I don't know what you're talking about and all that and um you know, they pretty much uh she said that the whole situation about Nene and uh her doing the drugs and stuff and I guess she was trying to imply that Nene wasn't acting like herself or whatever. And, you know, Cynthia's like, you know, Nene was fine or whatever. Candy had already done check Kim and was like, you know, I told you with that when that we sat down, well, that, that shit was not cool. So, girl, you need to get your damn life. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I don't appreciate you uh, saying that I got a drinking problem, Candy. I'm like, girl... Why you don't appreciate her saying that you got a drinking problem? Don't you always have that motherfucking cup in your damn hand, girl? You always got a cup in your damn hand, and you always think on coming somewhere with your own liquor. That's why you always got to have Troy as your, uh, Croy as your damn, uh, DD. And, um, it ain't just because you want to show first, because he, you drunk all the damn time. So, why would it even be a daggone problem that she said that? We already know this. You say it all the time, and Candy brought that shit to her attention. Um... So, anywho, and then Candy's kind of like, you know, Sheree, I also, you know, I'm pissed at your ass because you ain't let me know what the hell Kim said about me trying to uh, do a threesome or eat, eat her pussy or whatever. So, you know, Sheree is like, you know what I'm saying, I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't my job to carry that bone back to you. And, you know, she deflecting too because Sweetie, that's what Sweetie does. Sweetie has to take up for damn Kim and all that. And she acts like she got amnesia. And, you know, she pretty much is like, you know, I pick and choose which damn bones I can carry back to the whatever, whatever. So I'm like, girl... What the fuck? Or whatever. Either you're going to be the damn bone collector or you're not. And that's pretty much what dang on Cynthia was like. Cynthia was like, girl, we need a new bone collector, honey, because you was retired and you was through. And, 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 girl, that's why your job is being revoked. And Bravo recognized that shit because you, you won't carry in the right bone stack. So, boom, moving right along. Um... So then, boom, Candy Dang on drops the whole bomb. Like, okay, so Kim, you want to sit up here and try to do that? That's your ass up here. You the one who like to get your pussy ate by DJ Tracy while your children is sitting there in the living room or whatever. So <laughs> I'm sitting here like, damn, Candy, you ain't have to drop bombs on the girl like that or whatever. But yeah, she like, I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever. She ain't really deny the shit, though. Because Kim kind of strikes me as that type. But like I say, this whole episode was about Kim or whatever. And, um, you know, Candy confronts her on the whole situation when she was talking about her and Todd and their relationship and everything. And Candy's just like, girl, I don't know what the hell you talking about. You sitting up here acting like you know me and you know the situation. You weren't even friends with me at that time when me and Todd was together. You sitting up there looking at our ass, you being a big ass fan, stalking our ass on the page and all that, wanting to be a part so you can come back on this little season with your little snippets and stuff and have your moment or whatever. And I was like, yes, honey, yes, yes. Get into the girl, let her know about her damn self right there. I'm sorry I got my motherfucking notes. I told you I had my notes because it was a lot to talk about in this. So, boom. Um, Kim's deflecting so then they come right back to the whole roach incident and everything and you know, she still does not understand what she said and how that could be you know, offensive to black people and stuff and you know, Candy, uh, well, Nene's kind of like, well, no, girl, if you think that I'm the one that got the problem, just ask any of these other girls. And Candy's just like, you know, girl, people associate roaches with black people living in the projects and just being dirty, nasty, filthy. So, you know, y'all knew what the fuck y'all was doing. This is shit, this is shit that y'all talk about amongst y'all selves or whatever. So, bitch, don't do me. That's pretty much how she was coming. Um, anywho, so... So, like, the uh, ladies uh, shipped on to Sheree's ass or whatever, back on her. And, you know, they pretty much, like, you know, you knew about this whole video and all this. And Kim's like, you know, um, 
you know, I didn't have no intentions of getting on camera right quick. I didn't have no intentions of putting this video out there, but y'all had pissed me off, so I decided to share it or whatever and, you know, show Sheree. And Sheree's like, you know, you know, I, it wasn't my job to carry it back. It wasn't my job. It was like, girl, it is your damn job. You already uh, came, you claim yourself as a damn bone collector LLC. Like, what the fuck, girl? What the fuck? How you gonna be sitting up here dang on uh, deflecting that, too? But like I say, sweetie, she got to take up for, for Kim. She always got to be in defense for Kim. And um, so they, they dug into her and, and, and Portia, you know, Sheree's like, you know, back up off me, back up. And, you know, Portia's like, girl, you having your moment, sit, sit in it. Because this is your last damn moment, girl. It's your last moment on the couch. So, boom. <laughs> you know, I was like, yes, Portia, get her together. So, you know, at this point, Kim's over the situation. She feels attacked. She's like, oh, my God, I got to go. You know, I'm just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm done here, whatever. She done picked her shoes up that she walked in with or whatever. Her red solo cup with them duck-ass lips and everything. And that damn fire red-ass shred. And then Nene like, girl, bye. Get the fuck on, girl. Get the fuck off the stage, okay? Poof. Be gone. Or whatever. And so... <laughs> So she gets off or whatever. Andy goes over the whole little thing, asks the girls what they regret for poor. They go over their little regrets and what they, you know, positivities that came out of the season and stuff. You know how they kind of do the little year review with the ladies. And uh, so, boom, we get to the aftermath right here. This is where the tea comes in. So Kim's requesting that Andy comes in the back exclusively with the, um... With the lady, I mean, or by herself or whatever, by herself with Kim, so and Croy, and so she's back there, she's crying, she's like, <laughs> I don't know how you can sit there and, and let them and just attack me and all that, and, and Croy's like, yeah, you know, she she was really out there being just 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 hammered and everything, and you just sat there, and you could have did something, and and, and and you know, she pretty much trying to use. Uh, what Nene been talking about this whole season, privilege to get back there or whatever. And, you know, she's like, you know, these all, all I got is these African-American women's back there. But you done sat here this whole damn uh, series and season talking about you not a racist, but you had to highlight African-American women. Why they couldn't just be motherfucking women? Why they couldn't be women and they and let that be right there? But no, you had to highlight African-American women. I have no sympathy for how they went in on your ass. Like, for real, for real, girl. Because you've been sitting here showing your damn true colors this whole motherfucking season. You got Sheree ass in there, sweetie. Sweetie right there consoling you. Sitting there looking like Pepto motherfucking Bismol or whatever in a parachute. Or what like, for real, girl. Like, I, I'm over your ass, Miss Kim Zosiac, because you sat here and then showed your ass this whole fucking season. And you want to get mad because all these girls motherfucking let your ass have it on this last episode. You deserve every bit of what you got. Everything that you did this season was nothing but an attack on the other individuals. And they did not fucking deserve that because they did not come at you like that. But you always got some shit going on with you or whatever. You always got some shit going on with you. And you try to mask that shit and try to play your ass. It's like you the damn cool, you know what I'm saying? I, it's like you always the victim, the victim, the victim. That's the problem. That's the problem. You need to stop playing the damn victim, okay? Because you the one who, the, who was the fucking bully, the fucking instigator of this whole situation. Just like Kenya and all them damn girls say. And I hope everybody saw this shit. I hope the whole damn world saw. And yes, I was glad that Miss Andy Cohen was like, girl... Let's break this shit down. You didn't have no positive moments in this whole season, girl. Your storyline was shit, and it was what it was. And they had every right to come at you the way that they did. And I was like, yes, read this girl down, Andy, because we done fucking seen it. We sat here and watched you do this shit every single episode and talk shit and everything. And you act like you the fucking victim. Like, boom, girl, bye. I hope your ass don't come back on the damn episode. I'm glad they got rid of Sweetie Ass Part 2 or whatever for the second fucking time because she needed to go or whatever. Needed to go. Go work on that jogger dang on line that you got coming out, Sheree, because we over you sitting right there dang on. I, let, me say, let me shut the fuck up. All I can say is this right here. We got to see what's going to happen on this next season. Um... 
Like I said, we know Sheree ass ain't gonna be back. I'm glad that this series is over. This season right here is over. Um, hopefully they bring Eva back and cause she's she's good. Hopefully we get to see more of Kenya what she got and you know hopefully she'll be about five or six months pregnant about this time. Um, yeah, like I say, um, Kim, I think that you low key racist. And let me just finish that off with that right there. You know, that's just my opinion. And uh, people can beg to differ. I don't give a damn. It's my motherfucking opinion. But, yeah, that was my review on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, this is my Cardi and my Card TV. Give it a thumbs up. And also hit that subscribe button and join the family. All right? I love you all. All right. Bye.